It was good, everybody. It's your man Rico. Uh, was good. Come on in. Let's uh, let's have this discussion. Oh, let me start off correctly. Welcome to uh, uh, lunch, chat, and chew with Rico. I'm Rico. And if you haven't already found out, uh, I am on social media all over the place. Um, I have a Rico the Opinionist Facebook group. Y'all check that out if you want to. Uh, subscribe to my Rico the Opinionist YouTube channel. I have TikTok, Instagram. You know, it's all over the place. Uh, if you want to hear more of what I have to say, I say some things on on Facebook, but uh, but I'm been I've been uh, going more to my YouTube channel and all, and I've also created a second channel. I'll just and it's called um, Your Master, Your Master Level Social Worker, Your Master Social Worker. And that's my more, that's my calm, more educational, my social work side. And I think I should, uh, I just thought, hey, let me give y'all both sides of who I am. You no, know, this is me with all the opinions and thoughts and all that. Tina, oh, Lucia, what's good? Uh, thought I'd give y'all this side, you know, with the hard-hitting opinions, controversial thoughts and statements. Yeah, but you know, there's a duality and, and a triology, if you will, about me. There's a various aspects of me. And so I created the social work page, Your your Master's Level Social Worker, Your Master Social It's called Your Master Social Worker. And on that page, it'll it'll be totally different, different, you know, polar opposites of what I'm talking about on Rico the Opinionist. Um, this one is just me sharing, sharing um, social work stuff uh some uh social work stories of you know, counseling and and uh all of that <laughs> ernest what's up man it's an afternoon cat daddy <laughs> good afternoon uh ernest what's up david pierce was good uh so y'all please like and share and uh also check out this facebook page i have my my book on there my you know my little my little short story i wrote years ago it's called The Greatest Pain I Ever Felt. A conversation with the absent biological father who dared to be found, didn't want to be found. Matter of fact, I found out about him by accident. Uh, by my aunt, I had her a picture on here yesterday celebrating her birthday. Uh, my aunt passed, she let it slip out about who my actual biological father was. And um, <clears throat> I was 22 years old, uh, making my way through Grambling State University. And, and uh, let's just say, the, the drama began from there, not with her, but on my quest to find out who this guy is and uh, talk to him and all of that. But he didn't really want to meet me, and, and it's cool. Uh, yeah, I want to know what he said when I when I went and knocked on his door, December twenty fifth, two thousand and eight, at four thirty five, four thirty, four thirty five p.m. He lived in a you know, beautiful suburb outside of Memphis all that time. Yeah, he asked me, say, hey, how did you find me? And I said, you know, Google, you know, MapQuest, Google. He said, he says to me, well, I have to give you an A for effort because I've worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. And if y'all like to read all the ins and outs of that whole exchange as well as other aspects of that journey, check me out. It's only $10. Cash app, you boy, dollar sign, Rico, the opinionist, O-P-I-N-I-O-N-I-S-T. And it's Rico, R-I-C-O-T-H-E, Rico, the opinionist. And if you decide to hit your boy up on that cash app or that PayPal with the same name, Rico, the opinionist, please send me an email address because it's currently in PDF format. So uh, if you're cool with me, fool with me. So uh, let's get to, and by the way, uh, y'all don't have to stop chewing out chat as y'all chew. This is lunchtime chat and chew. But after I'm done with my thoughts, I do welcome your thoughts. So don't go anywhere. If you go somewhere, come back. Sometimes people just don't want to hear me talk. So you can go away and come back and then hit that little green or red button and you come in and talk to me. I got a minute. But but today's topic is that, that uh, the image on the cover of British Vogue magazine, which is a white women's magazine and every once in a while it has black people on the cover 
And a lot of times these pictures are taken by this Jewish white woman by the name of Annie Leibowitz. And if you want, if you want a black man to look crazy, or if you want some weird images and messages sent out, be it satanic or demonic or just feminist or gay or whatever, Annie Leibowitz is the is the photographer for you. Uh, and and now I'm not, I haven't done the research to see if she actually took this picture of Rihanna and ASAP Rocky and that little baby, um, but I wouldn't be shocked if it is her, because Annie Leibowitz took the picture of. Um, LeBron James, when he was when he looked like King Kong holding a white woman, Annie Leibovitz took that picture, and possibly on and possibly, and I y'all y'all will correct me, I'm sure. Harry Styles, the pop singer, Harry Styles wearing the woman's dress or the feather boa, you know, I think she probably took that picture as well. Annie Leibovitz, she will gay you out and or make you look really strange and effeminate as a man because it's a women's magazine. And, and and for those of you who who've seen who have seen the image where Rihanna's just walking straight ahead and holding ASAP, and her image is bigger than his, and he's holding a baby and 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 uh, you know giving a little baby, baby a kiss on the cheek while she's walking as if she's Miss America, just you know she has it all. Okay, well, these images, as as I think, is what got a lot of people in an uproar. Or at least has has conversations starting to happen, and it's the same on image, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, the image of men, and this is this society today, and particularly black men, and and I'm just convinced that black Americans don't understand the importance of images, but interesting though when they get into these uh, these these different fields of be it music or modeling and all of that they. They purposely say, hey, we want this image, we want that image, but they can't seem to, to catch on to images in TV shows that they love to watch, like P-Valley. They don't understand the danger and the, and the powerfulness of the images in shows like Black Mafia Family and Power and Power Book 2, Canaan and Rise of Canaan, all that. They don't, they don't seem to understand those images. It's the weirdest thing. And, uh, and so images in print, they really mean something, or they wouldn't put them out there, especially for black men. Uh, and so, let me get into it. What I saw, and I like to hear what you saw. And I, I read some, I read some Facebook pages and read, read some Facebook posts, and um, and of course, you no, know, uh, we had the women said, "No, she, he's, he, he looks like he's, he has her back." And and I th I think our women are the only ones who's concerned about somebody who has their back. If you had a husband, you you somebody have your back. But uh, I'm going by the statistics that show that black women probably won't be married no more than at thirty percent, as opposed to women of other groups married at fifty percent or a little over. So I guess they said we need somebody to support us, we need somebody to protect us, we need somebody to have our back. That seemed to be black women's mantra a lot. Try to have their back. Well, you can somebody can have your back if you take your time and get a husband before you get pregnant. I mean, solidify a relationship, then get a husband, no, and get married and get proposed to. You no, know, if you're acting in your feminine nature, you have a husband. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all what I saw because I, I I looked at the picture, and and. <laughs> Images are powerful, right? Okay, when y'all go and Google the picture, or you see it on someone else's Facebook page or Instagram or what have you, let's start with Rihanna. Rihanna has this very, uh, this look she has on a black nighty. Well, let's look at the whole look. She has on a black nightgown. Now, she's supposed to be on the beach. And, of course, her hair is flowing as, the, as if the wind is blowing. That's part of Anna Leibovitz's thing. Uh... And then you have her this big, and ASAP Rocky's in the back holding a baby, and he has on black leather. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the baby's pamper or whatever is, is leather. And I was like, wait a minute. Are they trying to pull one of those Bal Balenciaga BDSM, baby BDSM photos off as if we're not paying attention? 
Because I looked, because pull, make the picture big. And I don't know, maybe that's black cloth or is that black leather? Because what, what are two people who are supposed to be walking on the beach doing with black leather on? It's giving me BDSM, uh, what's it, uh, bound, dominant, dominant, sadist, masoch sadist masochism, bondage, domination, sadist masochism. It's almost as if <clears throat> Rihanna's in front and she's the sadist and ASAP Rocky is the masochist. You know, y'all understand how that works. There's leather involved. And usually the guy is on all fours being controlled or led by the woman with a leash. And that's how she's walking as if she's pulling her pets or her her dominated person behind her. Check out the picture. And then for this to be, for those of you who want to say, that's just a family, a happy couple. There's nothing happy about that. Rihanna has this, this, this very almost... Dead look in her face as she's walking in. Just this dead look in her face in the picture. And then, you know, one thing about the internet, people pull up a lot of pictures. And go and check out the family pictures of Harry, Prince Harry and Meghan Mark. What's up, Darren? What's up, Miss Latanya? Jeffrey North, what's up? No, check out uh David Pierce was good. And so um Check out how he is holding the baby and Megan looks very feminine beside him. Y'all check out the pictures when they do white men and other men with their women. He looks like the leader of the household. He looks like a proud dad. No, a masculine proud dad. And, she, and even if he's holding the baby, she's there doting over her husband and her child. Like this is the man who's going to take care of us. Look at that ASAP Rocky picture. Anthony, what's up, my man? Tony. Uh, look at that ASAP Rocky. He's back there as if he's the nanny or someone referred to for <laughs> describing it as him being, he looking like the baby mama walking in the back. And there, there's no masculinity aspect of it. And this is how they present the so-called black family. And we all know there's no marriage there. Some people say they were married. We don't know anything about it, but let's just continue to push the narrative that that the black community is, what's up, David Brown? The black community is a bunch of baby mamas and baby daddies. Hey, bro, Walker, what's up? And so, and 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 so people would look at it and, and think it's just a powerful picture. I don't see it as a powerful picture. I see it as another slap in the face, another, you know, as folks would say, shade at black couples or yeah, Caribbean and a and a and a and a black baby dad. Caribbean woman and a black baby dad. And so this is what we're seeing. And this is why it's creating a lot of uh, you know, conversation. And but in order for you to understand this, you have to have a level of cri critical thinking. You have to be in tune with what white supremacy on all fronts. You know, we you know we just a lot of us just celebrated her during the Super Bowl. But still be, be able to be critical in what you see. And this is the image that's always pushed when it comes to black couples. Let's go to, a, and, 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 and I guess black women uh, and women of color. Brianna being a woman of color because she's mixed or something. But some people like call her black, but I don't. Um, then there are some women who like think, think it's okay. No, it is what it is, but uh, but I know what I see. When I compare it to how these same magazines present other so-called couples that are not black. And then you have Essence Magazine. There's a cover of this brother that's on there. I'm going to have to really check that out because it looks kind of suspect. This new dude who's playing in the new uh, Creed movie with Michael B. Jordan. He's on the cover of Essence. And it's something about that picture that doesn't seem quite right. But 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 the controversy surrounding that picture is there are a lot of black women referring to him having a what's called a slave face. That's another topic. But but black men are such colorists, right? Um so um when I saw the picture I saw BDSM. Uh who in the hell wears black leather on a beach? 
And when I put it into context, you know, so yeah, they, they're, they're pushing the narrative again. And, and, and again, this is a white feminist magazine, a magazine that pushes the feminist perspective on everything. Because they rarely have a masculine looking man, be it black, white, or others, who grace the cover of Vogue. It's something fruity about them or something emasculating about whenever they put a man on there, on Vogue, on the cover of Vogue. So one can almost expect the foolishness if you're on the cover of Vogue. Or they have him looking like they had LeBron James looking, like he is uh, an ape or something. <laughs> Anthony says Rihanna taking pictures with her wife and present the kid and uh, and, pre and present the kid on the beach. It's it's weird, and 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 this generation of young men aren't even in tuned enough with the importance of the role that images play in this society that they, they just accept it. And then in the past fifty years, we have to be fair. A lot of our logic, a lot of way we think, comes from. The, a, a matriarchal upbringing. A lot of us as black men came up without masculine presence in our homes. It was just mother, grandma, sisters, aunties. And so therefore, it it's shaped the way a lot of uh, uh, the way a lot of young men think. And so they don't see themselves as men. They see themselves through the eyes of the women in society or the women who Raise them. Listen to how a lot of these guys talk. I'm going to give you all a quote where I saw a guy write down. I was looking at a Facebook page. Pearl says, glad they didn't make her masculine like they did Michelle Obama on time. Well, they didn't have to do much to make Michelle Obama look masculine. Uh, however, I, I get your point. And Rihanna, she, there is a masculinity in that picture. Again, go look at how Meghan Markle and how... Uh, other white women are portrayed when they're with their man. They look, go look at a Meghan Markle picture with Harry. She looks very feminine. She's smiling. She looks like a dutiful wife with the man who's holding her baby. Rihanna looks like some little rough and tough. No, even though she has on a, 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 a nightgown and all that, but she, there is a masculinity in that photo because that's Vogue. Vogue presents women as masculine and boss or in charge. Vogue magazine has no interest in the nuclear family where the man is in charge because it's a feminist magazine. It's a magazine for women to you know, pu to push women out front, which is fine. But if, let's say, if I, if I were married or I had a, a woman, my girlfriend who had a baby, I would instruct a photographer, let me tell you something. I run this, I run this household. I am the man of this house. Yes, she made, let's say she made, $10 million more to me, the image will still be presented that I am the man in this relationship. Because a lot of people say, well, she make all the money. That's the problem right there. A lot of women, hold on one second, the pic of Rihanna on the beach leading her wife and kid looks masculine. Anthony, yeah, I agree. You know, she's not looking back. She's not smiling. Her face is stoned and hard. You know, that's supposed to be a very a, a momentous and a naturally wonderful occasion. you with your husband or with your man and your child. And that's supposed to be something that's, that's really celebrated. But then people, then of course I heard people read when people say, well, the article's really about her. Well, they should have left the baby and him out and made it about her. But also when they make it about the woman, they will usually put the woman and the child and leave a man out. So we have to be we have to be mindful of these images because these images also play out in regular society. Did y'all hear me? Images are real. If y'all don't think images are real, why do you think people wear the clothes that they wear? Why do you think Jordans is so so important to young black men, to young people? Period. Because the numbers show that young white males and and, and middle school white males buy more Jordans than we assume that black kids buy. No. What's up, Ivan? Thank you for checking in. Kevin Matthews, what's up, bro? And so we, we have to, we, we just have to, we just have to grow up and mature and accept, you know, this, this side doesn't care for us when we're being positive. They want to make sure they put a negative slant on whatever we do. Even if we're together, even if we're together and unmarried, they still don't want to present us as, uh, as a positive and positive images and a positive light. 
Y'all understand? Okay. Um, if anybody want to chime in, I'll take your calls right now. Go ahead and push that green or red button. I want to hear what you have to say. Because I think I pretty much filled, I filled in all the blanks in relation to what I think about the picture. But when I saw it, I said, okay, here you go, right here. Okay, let's go. Okay, here, Adiba. Uh, she know that they were going to pick the pick. Oh. Pearl Walker, she says she said she didn't know they were gonna pick the pick. <sighs> Let's come on in here. It's trying to add you, but somehow it just just won't do right. And again, while Pearl is trying to come on, y'all know your boy has a PDF that he's selling. It's called a the little book that I wrote years ago. It's pretty cool about uh, me uh, finding out about my father by accident at age 22. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. A uh, conversation with an absent biological father who dared to be found. Oh, okay. Sounded like it was declined. So, Pearl, you changed your mind. So, if anybody else would like to come up and share your thoughts of the photo, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, some people don't even know who ASAP Rock is. He's a rapper. I think, I think he's out of Atlanta. But uh, if you'd like to push that red, what's that blue or green button, press the button and come on in. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Or you can you can question me about my thoughts about the picture. I don't mind. I got a minute. Let's see who this is. Okay. I heard Deepa's trying again. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. You have to press something. I think I did it right, Pearl. All right, so uh, we're gonna try Pearl again. So if she want to come on in and give her thoughts. Uma, how are you? Uh, Uma, I hope, I, I hope I pronounced it right. Really. But yeah, we're talking about the ASAP Rocky and Rihanna picture on the cover of Vogue. All right, so Pearl, is, it's not letting you in. You, you say you keep declining. So, but anybody else want to share their thoughts? What do you think about the picture? I gave my thoughts. But if you have another perspective, I'd like to hear it. Let's chop it up. Hit that green or blue button, whatever that is, is right there that's telling you to come in and talk to me. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, I don't see, uh, so if I can reframe it, I'd say, well, you know, they're together and all of that. Clear cut markers, what's up? Um, they're together in it, but it's still, um, Okay, Jeff Noah said, despite the photo, I think ASAP Rocky carries himself like a gentleman. Sure, he does, but his rap music sucks. <laughs> Pearl said, raggedy ass phone, sorry. Uh, but also, there's something I left out. Uh, they have on this BDS, they have this BDSM look. But also, y'all notice his his earring. This she's, I think his earring is turned to the right. I think ASAP has earrings, ear, earring in both ears. But somehow, and maybe I'm I'm going a little far with this, but y'all know, you know, as men, we say when a guy has one earring and it's on the right side, y'all know what that meant, right? Or what, what, since, I, since I was a kid, that 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 when it, when a when a man has one earring and he wears it on the right side, that that was supposed to signify that he is gay. And so it's interesting that in the picture, the earring side that they're showing is his right side. Images and everything, but maybe I'm maybe hey, maybe I'm going too far. Uh, maybe that's changed because usually if you, if a brother wears an earring, it's on his left side. If he has, if he wears one earring, it's in the left ear. If he wears one earring and it's on the right ear, that means he, he he pitches for the other team. That's what it's always meant when I was growing up. You know, let me know if that was different from you. But a lot of times, brothers they wear you no know, both earrings. You know to throw off all the foolishness. So yeah, I yeah, I looked at it and I, I was trying to see something else. I was trying to see exactly what was that on her tattoo because they will put stuff right in your face and you you'll be looking at it and don't even uh okay, Pearl said one, one last try, let's try it again. I'm, I'm going to prove you and it says send uh, boom. All right, let's try to ask. So Pearl's the only one who wants to talk to me. 
Uh, who else would like to get on? And uh, and, and if, if you if you if you get on, just hold on. I'll I'll, I'll get to you. Uh, it's not gonna be long with it. But if anybody else would like to come on and talk to me, share your thoughts, I would love to hear it on on the on the photo on the cover of Vogue, British Vogue. It could be American Vogue. It doesn't even matter because the image would have been the same. Because feminists don't care about masculine men because they're the masculine ones. They always they, they and, and one thing about it, I can't knock people who have their own vehicle to produce images because it'd be cool. I'd like to have a magazine, and all I would do is push masculinity. Jeff Ross says him kissing a child shows compassion. You're right. It shows that he loves his little baby. It shows all of that. Perla says decline again. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's none of that, that's being questioned. We're talking about the image, and that's a good image. Him kissing his little baby, but she's like, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like that, uh, like that commercial. I can bring on the bacon, mm -mm -mm, fry it up in a pan, and do whatever I can to please my man, cause I'm a woman. It's almost like, I am woman, hear me roar. I am woman, I am woman. Y'all remember he Helen Redding from the seventies? <laughs> yeah, all these little feminist uh, anthems and stuff. But it's interesting. Uh, the feminist, I guess this was considered a feminist answer, uh, anthem with Shaka Khan's I'm everyone. It's all in me, anything you want to. But Shaka Khan is different than Shaka Khan was letting the man know, baby, whatever you want, I can do it. I, I am it. You know. I can cast the spell, cast the spell, because you can tell. See, put your mind and groove into the inside of you. And if you're in danger of fear, I will appear, I will appear. Oh, I see. Shaka Khan was saying, look, bro, I got your back. I'm everything that you need. Now, these other broads, I am woman, hear me raw. I am woman, shaw to shaw, I am woman. No, that ain't, that ain't got shit to do with a man. Joel Thomas, what's up, North? Hear me. What's up? And so, uh, Jeffrey North said, it looks like a role reversal. Yeah, it's always like that. In the times that we're living in right now, they want men to be girls and girls to be men and women. It's the weirdest thing. And then they question why the marriage rate is so low among particular groups of women. Well, just our group, just black women. And so they push these narratives, you know, they push these Cardi B's and Megan Thee Stallions and all these on young women. You have young women who are in college, young black women who are in college. It's unfortunate. They don't even see themselves getting married. And number two, they don't even want to get married. And that's fine. After then you have them when they get out of college, they're 24 years old. They've got their master's degree at 25. Then they say, then they look around and say, well, all the eligible men there. There's no black man who come up to my standards. Ah, I don't see there uh, where I work in corporate America. Ah, there's no black men. I, 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 I have my stuff together. I have my degrees. I have my home. I make my own money. Ah, you know, that foolishness. Let me tell you something about that. Uh, whenever you hear a woman is 25 and 30 years old and brags about having a, a RN nursing degree or she has a master's degree or a law degree and or she's a CEO, ignore her. Because one thing y'all have to let them know, sweetheart, during your prime, you are at a university, especially if you went to an HBCU. There were men, there were at least 15 men in your classes. Your biology Major, there were men in your classes. So when I hear women 25 to 30 talking about how I know men, no, no black men are eligible. There are no black men around. Who, you stupid broad. You were in college with men. You, you're a biology major. You look right across the classroom and saw that brother studying, if not hard, harder than you. But for some reason, you didn't see him as a potential mate because the women in our society have been duped out of their natural femininity, the natural order of things. You say, well, what about the men? The men are getting married. You don't believe me? Ask a white woman. Uh, <clears throat> ask an Asian. Uh, whoa. Ask a Latina. Wait a minute. Ask a Filipina. Ask a Thailand. Black men are getting married. 
So that that question right there. <laughs> so, uh, and whenever you hear, hear a young woman, 25 to 30 years old, talking about she came, I'm trying to find out uh, that. You were in college with your husband for four years. Then you went two more years to get a master's, master's degree. You were in college with your man two more years. Or you went three more years to law school. You were in, you were with your husband for, so when I hear these bras talking about they're 30, 35 years old, medical doctor, but there are no black men around. Bitch, you was in medical school with black men. So I, I, don't y'all pay these women any attention. But guess what? When they were in college, you think they ain't getting nobody, no cooch? <laughs> Young lady, <laughs> we used what? At least 20 years old in college, junior, senior. You was getting away plenty of cooch. Now, none of those 30 to 40 dudes you let let hit, at least five of them didn't cut the mustard, as, as you would say, future husband material. And then they're always talking about somebody to build with. That was the time people start building with. You're in college together. Y'all could have gone on the law school together. You could have gone to medical school together. You could have gone into the workforce together and become CEOs or, or supervisors or directors together. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. So I'm kind of out of that conversation because it's stupid. But it's big money to talk about that allow, allow women over 30 to talk about how they can't find a suitable mate. And you were in college all those years and no damn where you let somebody hit. Hell, you had trains ran on you too. So that fourth guy in that train, you didn't see him as possible husband material. When you ran through the football team, not even a kicker was a, or the right tackle. None of them was husband material. Even when you ran through the, the basketball team, the guy who, who got most playing time or the guy who sat on the bench, none of these dudes, sweetheart. You can't do <laughs> Anyway, so told you, I don't have these weird-ass conversations about relationships because I live in reality. We all know why we're single. And so live live, live up to it and, uh, you know, and accept the choices that you made. But anyway, uh, if you have, I want to hear your thoughts on the Rihanna cover with her. I guess uh, her baby did it and her, and her little child, uh, ASAP Rocky. Uh, press that red or that blue button. I'm gonna, come on up. I'm going to hear what you have to say. Uh, we, can, we can have this conversation. Uh, how long have you been married? I've never been married, bro. Ooh, I dodged the bullet. So, uh, yeah, never been married. No one ever asked me. And I've never complained about it either, by the way. I can't find no woman to marry. I know I'm a man. That, that's no problem for me. If I ever want to get married, all I got to do is ask somebody. Especially in these times, I think these chicks will marry a frog if you say, ribbit, marry me, ribbit, you marry me, ribbit. So, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the problem. It's the ladies that's running around here tripping because they understand they're not going to be married. Someone has to ask them, but still they won't. They won't behave in a way that that'll make the masses of men want to ask them. So guys have have to leave the country and shit to go around women who position themselves to be asked to be married. But that's the American culture: it toughens up the women and softens up the men. It's the weirdest thing. Uh. Especially if you were born after 95. Whew. These young fellas, God, dog. Girls and guys, it's rough out there. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. Anybody on here want to come in and uh, talk about the cover of Rihanna and ASAP Rocky? I gave my point, my thoughts on it. I thought it looked a little BDSM. I thought, you know, uh, I, I didn't particularly care for the image. Uh, and they read. But but it's Vogue magazine, be it British or be it American. Vogue magazine is a, is a white woman's magazine. And they're, they're, they're about the empowerment of women, just like Essence magazine. But one thing about our Essence magazine, it used to be fair years ago. It had black, black men and black women on there. But I know it was a, it's a women's magazine. And it had the women on there really beautiful and looked very feminine and very nice. You know, uh, but I don't think they were better than Jet magazine. What I loved about 
Jet Magazine, for those of you who are a little older, Jet Magazine had the beauty of the week. And she was a very feminine, natural, nice curves. You never saw a big girl at Jet, Jet Beauty of the Week, ever. You know, Thelma from Good Times. And uh, uh, who else is on there? Uh, Pam Greer was curvy, but she wasn't a big girl, good God Almighty. Jane Kennedy. You know, women who had, had a waist with a neck without spanks and, and two-piece, beautiful sisters. But Essence Magazine has been bought and sold and uh, for the longest and by all kinds of owners. And so they all have these different ideas. And so the women are looking a little different. They have more, hell, they have more airbrush on there than actual photo. But I saw, when I, I knew Essence Magazine is pretty much going down the toilet when they had uh, Hollywood's Most Beautiful Black Women. It was a cover, right? <clears throat> um, Uma, hit the red button, man. Let's have a conversation because because I, I, that's the kind of question that, that it needs more clarity. And then and then you pose the question incorrectly. What's wrong with the big girl? No, I don't, it makes, it's almost like a seventh grader asked me a question. But you can hit that red button, man. We can uh, have that if you want to have a big girl conversation. Uh, but about SS Magazine, I saw this cover. I had Angela Bass. I think Angela Bass on had A lot of the ladies of that time uh, beautiful sisters in Hollywood, but they put Laverne Cox in the picture. I knew then, okay, Essence Magazine has has a uh, has uh, bit the apple, if you will. And I didn't hear not one complaint about from any black woman in America that they put a dude up there in the wig and call him Hollywood's beautiful black women. It was amazing, and so I listened. Okay, okay. I just kind of moved on from there. Uh, yeah, let's, you know, it's a magazine uh, out of there. They don't even know. And then you saw Katanji Brown Jackson. Do you know what a woman is? Now, this is the woman who's, who's been confirmed as the Supreme Court Justice. She didn't know what a woman is. I just, I said, it don't take long or take much for me to move on. Not even a debate for me. I said, I get it. We moved in those times. And Real people are being erased right before our eyes. And we have those of us who look like us who are participating in the erasure of the black female image biologically and the black male. We have us participating in that. But it's nothing new. We've all, a lot of us have always participated over the decades, over the centuries, in the demise of us on some level. There were a lot of black slaves who snitched on the people who were trying to escape. So that's nothing new and help to murder and all that stuff. So, but yeah, uh, uh, but I started off initially giving my thoughts on the uh, cover of, of British Vogue with Rihanna and ASAP Rocky and the whole image, what I thought about it. But what do you think about it? Hit that red or that green button. Or if you have a question for me about anything else, cause I see some people on here who usually don't uh, tune into my lives. And so if you'd like to uh, pose a question, to me about anything under the sun, I'm, I'm more than open to answer it. I got a minute, and my next client is until an hour. Okay, well, my first client of the day is not until an hour. So uh, hit that red or green button and we can talk. Or in the meantime, you know, get, get that cash app ready because I do have a PDF uh, book for short stories, only 50 pages that I wrote. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt, a conversation with the absent biological father father who dared to be found. Uh, I found out about it by accident. I was a student at the Grambling State University. I was 22 years old. I was working um, my work study in the infirmary there on campus and uh, and uh, I, I snuck and made a long distance call and I called my aunt Patricia who had to celebrate her birthday on post yesterday and uh, she, uh, we were just talking and stuff and just kind of let it slip out. We were talking about family and all of that. And I'm like, what, who, what? And boy, your mama told you, I'm like, nah. And so, uh, yeah, it began the, it began the process. And uh, so, Demille, is that you, bro? And so, so uh, it began the process. And, uh, yep, and, uh, and, and, and me trying to find out who he is. And he even sent word back that, no, I don't want to meet Rico because my my new wife doesn't know anything about him. And, and uh, all of that, all of that. So not, 
I talked to him on the phone quite a bit. I wrote that in the book a bunch of times. And it's me basically talking to him because he barely talked to me. And I, and I wrote down every time we talked on the phone. One minute, one minute, 30 seconds, 48 seconds, 50 seconds. Two, I don't think he got past two minutes. Uh, but then uh, one day I decided on uh, December 25th, 2008, I was 39 years old. I decided that, you know, I'm not going to take this into my 40s, you know, trying to figure out who this cat is, what he looks like. And so I went to his house in the suburbs of Memphis and uh, knocked and rang the doorbell. I had my brother with me and he came out. And, and so his first question was me, he said hello to my brother. And I said, hey, what's up? He said, oh, hey. He goes, so uh, he asked me, so how did you find me? And I said, hey, you know, Google, MapQuest. He's like, well, I have to give you an A for effort because I've worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. And I'm telling you, it's only $10. Dollar sign, Rico the Opinionist. Uh, if you decide to hit me on that cash app or PayPal, the same thing, Rico the Opinionist. Look, send me an email address so I can email it to you right away. And after you read it, please tell me what your thoughts are. It's, it's like 50 pages. I also have a chat. I added a bonus little article or opinion in there called um, I Owe My Absent Biological Father an Apology. It's like three or four pages of me talking about why I think I owe that guy an apology. Demille, what's up? And so, uh, but if you'd like to come on, Demille, you just coming on. I'm talking about the cover with Rihanna and ASAP Rocky on the cover of British Vogue magazine. I gave my thoughts. And so what did you, uh, if you like to share your thoughts or anybody who's still in here like to share their thoughts on the cover, you know, hit me up, push that red or that green. I think it's red or green or whatever it is. And uh, let's talk about it. I got a minute. Uh, and so y'all want to hear something else? It's a part of the book, what he said. I asked him, it's a part of the conversation when we talked. By the way, he didn't invite me on the porch per se. I, he was on the porch. I, I talked to him mainly on the steps leading up to the porch. But uh, I asked him, I said, hey, it's Christmas. Where's everybody? And, uh, and his, uh, I said, you're married? He is my second wife. I said, so where is she? She's behind me, behind the door listening. And so she came out and said, hey, how you doing, ma'am? My name is Rico. And I just came to, uh, I just came by. I had to come by to meet my, meet my dad, who I'd never seen before, met before in my life. And uh, she said, I know, I understand. You have to do what you have to do. And and he looks at her and said, "Hun, I don't know if we've ever discussed this. She said, no, we've never discussed this. Well, I was young and I uh, I had a son and, and here he is. <laughs> Just kind of like. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so y'all pick it up. Dollar sign, Rico the opinion. This is only $10. You like to read the rest of the story. Are right, some gems throughout the, throughout the damn book. Uh oh uh the pdf if uh check it out uh you know let me know what you think about it uh hit your boy up but um uh, again m my main reason for going to this lunch chat lunchtime chat and chew was to get your thoughts give my thoughts on the cover of the rihanna magazine thing and vogue magazine and uh also uh, uh to hear your thoughts so if anybody like to hear like to chime in let me know Know what you, let me know what you think. I don't mind. Hit me up. I think it's that red or green button right there on your on your phone there. Press it. I'm, I'll pull you up and let me hear what you have to say. I got a minute. And also, I have a, a second YouTube uh, channel that I'm working on. It's called Your Master's Level Social, Your Master's Social Worker. And so on that page, I'm just talking, I'll be talking about, um, you know, just social work stuff. And there'll be counseling, be it, uh, you know, be it mental health and substance abuse. And, uh, all, and what are, all things social work. Let's see, Demille said, I've seen the storyline. I, I saw the storyline on yesterday on TV. Like my brother said, we can't gauge entertainment relationships like we do our own. Hold on a minute, brother. Oh, hold on. Like we do our own damn things. Says so see more, but I can't see more. Hold on. I don't want to accidentally press anything and we're gone. I can't see more, but but I'll take it as that. 
It says, um, hold on. But if anybody else like to, oh, damn it. Hold on. But if anybody else like to come in, chime in, hit that red button. Okay. Uh, I see the storyline. I saw the storyline on TV, I guess on yesterday. Like my brother said, my brother said, we can't gauge entertainment relationships like we do our own, but I don't like how they have a child and no wedding ring from ASAP. More promotion of our dysfunction. Right on, Demilio. It is. I said that earlier. They love to see us like separated, us to see us in, in dysfunction, to use your word. Yes, yeah, the society does love to promote that. But the positive things about us, ah, they kind of keep that under wraps. And then, then we're so in tune with what, with what they want, we volunteer to give them the foolishness just to get on. And that's really sad, too. Because one thing I, I learned about, you know, is the relationship about racism, if we think that's, believe that's a real thing, or racism, white supremacy, you don't have to volunteer for the bullshit. You don't. But a lot of us do because we're trying to, chase that almighty dollar and we'll sell our soul and we'll sell out the souls of our people just to say you know I, I got put on and that's that's the unfortunate part about all of this because one thing I learned it's just like anything it racism white supremacy is going to be what it is but you don't have to you don't have to behave as if you just given up and given into it a lot of us have given up and given into it you can still live in a life of abundance and still be dignified and respectful even on this system of racism white supremacy you don't have to do what they do you don't have to give them what they expect you to be you don't have to but a lot of us do and that's the part is weird then you're racism all day long but then i look at your behavior Hell, you're going along with it. Anytime you choose to have a baby out of wedlock, you're going along with racism. Anytime you, anytime you decide to, to uh, kill another black person, you're going along with racism. Anytime, anytime you say F school, education, no, you're, you're going along with racism. Hold on a second. Let's see what this is. All right, David Pierce. Let's see if you'll come in there, brother. Invite David. Maybe it's my phone is not getting people in here right. Let's see. Anytime you go along with this, you're helping to perpetuate the racism. You're not helping. And it, all, all this bad behavior and all this fighting and McDonald's and all in the streets like dogs, you are helping. You are participating in racism and white supremacy. You're giving people the false belief that they are superior. So, you know. It is what it is. He's still trying to join. I don't know why it's so, David, man, why is it so difficult for me to get people on, man? Dang. Uh, man, you're talking about like, a, can you hear me? Yeah, you're coming in and out. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like, I wanted to chime in, but I know I'm in my <laughs> truck and connection could be horrible. But, uh, yeah, man, you, you, you're talking about something that, just a, you know, it's a, it's a wedge issue. It's a, it's a hot potato. No one really want to touch it because no one really knows how to touch it. Yes. You need, you need, you need nuance. You need to put things in perspective. You got to bring in, you got to bring in uh, history. You got to let people know how long this, this agenda been going mm -hmm. on. And you know, the longer we get away from like the civil rights movement. And the longer we get away from Jim Crow era and, and the enslavement of our, our people, the more we think that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And little by little, they chip away at us until there was, there's not, there's not going to be anything left. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and, and right now, there's just a lot of sellouts right now. You know, we, we've always had sellouts. There's even more today. And, um, you know, proximity to whiteness you know, it's really got a lot of us drunk. And right now it's the sisters' turns to be drunk. You know, the brothers went through their drunk phase before, you know. And uh, now the sisters are going through it, you know. But I remember brothers being called out for their behavior. Uh, but today, if you call a sister out on their behavior, you know, uh, you you'll get canceled. You know, you'll be considered argumentative. Mm -hmm. You'll be considered... Misogynist uh, or misogynoir. 
Right. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, all that. And anytime you see N O I R, you might as well just <laughs> leave it alone. You know, so yeah. you ain't gonna get nowhere with people anytime you see N O I R. That's yeah. it. You know, I'll, but uh, I'll, I'll you no, know, people just drunk right now. Hey, you be careful, man. No. Yeah, yes, keep sir. you out on the road. Good, brother. Yeah. I'm a professional. I, I, I feel you. You're handling it. So was that it? Yes, sir. I that was it. Appreciate you chiming in, man. And there's some folks who hurt you. Uh, now, I don't know. Maybe something wrong with my phone. Yes, sir. Okay, well. Be cool, man, and uh, be, continue to be safe on the road. Okay, thank you, Brother David Pierce. Christopher Armour, what's good, Noah? And so, uh, yeah, we're talking about the ASAP Rocky thing, and I went into other stuff to give y'all a chance to see if y'all want to come in and talk about it. But, yeah, if anybody want to come in and talk about the cover of Vogue magazine, I am here for you. Press that, that green or that blue button. What color is that damn button? No, come on in. I want to hear your thoughts. If you saw the picture of Rihanna with ASAP Rocky and that little baby dressed in black leather on the beach. And I think, and I'm telling you, I pulled a picture up trying to make it really big. I could have sworn, does that baby have on like a leather pamper or leather thing? Like, because are they trying to do that, re replay that whole Balenciaga baby BDSM bondage dominatrix sadist masochism? masochism? Right before our eyes, you know, they connected to that too, though, like baby pedo stuff. Because, you know, this <laughs> this entertainment industry is not ain't worth a damn. And so they always try to pull some out, pull some off. But if you're not in tune with what's going on, it'll just go right over your head. A lot of people watch the Grammys and they saw a lot of stuff, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, satanic symbolism. I had already seen that in the Grammys, because in the Grammys and the American Music Awards, the Gospel Dub, Gospel Awards, all of them have the same satanic, satanic imagery. And so I don't watch a lot of stuff anymore like I used to, because, you know, now that I know better, it's like you can't hardly, you can't not see it. Unless you purposely turn your brain off and you're like, well, I'm just trying to look at it for the entertainment purposes. But it's in your face so hard now. They used to try to hide the stuff. And I think a lot of us are pretty much aware that the industry, in order for you to become a part of it and or successful, you have to uh, do something strange to get that change. Because YouTube and social media is blowing it up and people are making the decision to believe it or not to believe it. And that's your choice. But one thing I always believe in, I'm, I'm not a member of anybody's church, I'm not a member of anybody's religion, but I've always kept these two beliefs and understandings in place. God and nature, the natural order of things. And that's my debate. That's where I come from. I don't deal with all the other, the other nuances and the other the, the, the filibustering of in, in conversations. I don't get involved in all that. When I was young in my 20s, oh, we could talk all night about who has the coolest concepts, who can counteract this, counterblock this, blah, 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 blah. But it's, but it's boring to me because I, I, I see it right there and and I know, and it's tough. You just have to kind of like go along to get along though, to survive in this society. I get it. So what do you say, Demille? Hold on a minute. Let me try to get your whole comment here. I don't like the way my phone is acting. I'm just, all right. Maybe I need to get my glasses too. Hold on. Because I'm a man of a particular age now. Okay, what we got going on here? Uh, he said, good point, brother. Made about our drunkenness. Are oh, you talking about David? He said, talking about David. He said, no. Now some sisters are going through it. I'm tired of it because it seems like some sisters get to keep acting the way they act with no accountability. Correct? I even see it on some uh, jobs, and I'm tired of it. I've already washed my hands on of it because some of our women have been acting ungrateful lately. Lately, the thing is, like you said, they're acting a fool too. But here's the caveat. The, the the double standard they're not allowed no one calls them out on it and if you do is it like david said you get called these names as, as as the great uh late kevin samuels would say they they you start this sign language it's an acronym for shaming insult guilt and a need to be right that's what it 
this. Oh, misogynist, misogynoir. You hate women. Oh, he has a problem with his mother. You know, all that kind of shit. You cannot, but if, if when men have have messed up or they've sold out or bootlicked and all that, we call it, we get on their ass. Even the women get on the men. But those same women who get on the get on the men don't say a word when these chicks out here being thoughts and trots. Don't say a word. They they actually they actually applaud it or they don't say anything, which in my opinion you agree with it. Because if, if everyone else, you know, know how they used to say when Trump was running and certain and black people, if you didn't have anything negative to say about Trump, well your silence it's uh it's in agreement. Your silence is approval. Well, ladies, when you don't say anything about Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, City Girls, uh, all these young women wearing all this weird weave and dressing all nude and in and, and, and the public and all this, when you don't come out in droves and condemn this, your silence is approval. See how that works? And so I, I, I know that a lot of women are going to think this Rihanna cover is cool. Well, again, Let's go back to what the Nation of Islam said. And let's say in in the in the in when they say 144,000 will make it to the to the the, the mothership. 144,000. And then how how about this thing here where people say now they, the masses will not make it to the king to the kingdom. Only those only those who are knowledgeable will make it. And how about this one? Um <clears throat> when Gabriel, this is for my religious folks, my, my dipped in the blood of Christ folks who believe this, when the Lord returned, the, Gabriel will sign his, will, 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 will blow his horn as a sign of return of the Lord, the messenger. And when he blows his horn, not all will hear. Y'all understand that? So even with this going on like when i started off i said everybody's not going to understand what's in that photo they go they're just going to look at it surface and say, oh wow rihanna got her blah, blah, baby her blah blah blah, blah. they're not going to notice how she's bigger and he's smaller he's his, his earring is to the right and showing him you know as if he's like the chick in the relationship and she's the leader the boss of the relationship and then we had someone i saw one guy he said, well, you know, this it's just an image of showing how it's time for women, for black women to lead. Women, black women need to, it's time for them to take the lead. When was it ever time for women to take lead in the, in the society? And if they, they've done that, let me know how well that society uh, fared. You can't have a society without an army of men. And what has happened is everybody else has the protection of their, their groups, Asian men still run Asian relationships. White men still run you no know, their households. Hispanic men still we know they run theirs. But black men, it's always this these politics and this debates about who runs what. But yet the women aren't being married, aren't being proposed to, because you're out of order. There are a lot of men who are out of order, but you no know, men can straighten themselves up and still boom, land them somebody and become the man in that relationship. But the women, you're out of order, ladies. I'm just here to tell you, you're out of order. Be a girl, be feminine, be sweet, be fit, be submissive to a man who's prepared for that. And you and you get proposed. And it's another thing about that. A lot of young women have gotten proposed. Young black females have gotten proposals. Like, now nah, I'm too young. Bitch, you 26. What you mean? And the women are even gotten away from their own knowledge of their medical, their biological, or medical aspect of who they are. What do you mean? So I, I, I'm too young, and so. But you, he, but you, 27. You're not young as it relates to, as it relates to reproduction and 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 raising children. You're not young. As a matter of fact, you pass the time you can be delivering children at, at the appropriate time. We're not talking about being 15 years old in 10th grade. Nobody's suggesting that. No, we're out of order. We're just out of order. Our, our people are out of order. And, and so far away from God and nature, it's ridiculous. And it shows. Now, when you go further into the other stuff, I'm just saying, 
What are your thoughts? I'm asking, what are your thoughts on the cover of British Vogue magazine with Rihanna and ASAP Rocky? Anybody else have any thoughts? Jamil uh, uh, says, thank the creator for Kevin Samuels, like you stated. Watch the signs. Watch the signs. Exactly. Oh, and say Kevin Samuels in some circles is very controversial. I don't know why. Hell, it, it was the best thing that could have happened to our community in this day and time. That could be another live we can talk about. You know, because, uh, yeah, the best thing that could have happened to black men and black women is actually bringing them together. But it can't happen. And they can't have that. So you got to have your people together to criticize and tear it down. You know, but a lot of people still reached you know, his short period of time. They was here trying to bring black men and black women together. It's almost it's impossible. But it's not totally impossible. Uh, you know, a lot of guys are getting their passports and say, man, damn this. And uh, this culture, this American culture. But again, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Rihanna ASAP Rocky. Uh, Push the red button or the green button, whatever it is. I want to hear your thoughts. Come on up, Demil. Umar, what? Oh my, Umar Edwards, come on up. Push that red or that green. I'm gonna hear what you got to say. If not, I'll just go ahead and uh, just grab a little lunch before I have to go and uh, see my first client of the day. But anyway, again, check out your, check out the book. Uh, uh, it's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt, Conversation with Absent Biological Father. Uh, it's only $10. Hit your boy up. Dollar sign, Rico the opinion. It's, it's on this page. And then when I share this to my YouTube channel, it'll be um, in the description box. So uh, for those of you who tuned in for this lunchtime chat, thank you so much. We'll talk again in the future. Pay more attention to my YouTube channel. And for those of you who helped me get up to 200, over 200, thank you. Now I'm on the road to 1,500 because we're going to get monetized. You hear me? So y'all be cool. I will talk to y'all later. Uh, yeah, we'll vibe later. Peace.